Welcome to InstroTech's Explorer 2 Quick Start Guide video. Chapter 1. What's in the box? We'll begin this video by unpacking the Explorer 2 Type-A shipping case and showing you what's inside. First is the Explorer 2 Moisture Density Nuclear Gauge itself. Included is the reference standard block used for generating a standard count, the scraper plate for leveling your testing surface material, a drill rod used to make the hole in the material for the source rod, and the extraction tool for pulling the drill rod from the material. Lastly, you have your nuclear gauge paperwork and manual. Also included with your Explorer 2, AC and DC chargers, nuclear gauge and gauge case locks. Paperwork, what's inside? The envelope contains a USB flash drive, the Explorer 2 operating manual, Explorer 2 quick start instructions, the calibration report, the nuclear gauge certificate, type A case report, and the closing instructions. Ensure the nuclear gauge case is properly labeled and transportation paperwork is included. Refer to Explorer Operating Manual for details. Proper gauge case labels are required when transporting the Explorer 2 nuclear gauge. Refer to Explorer 2 Operating Manual for further instructions. Chapter 2 Taking a Standard Count at the Lab Taking a daily standard prior to use ensures the gauge is working properly. Start by removing the nuclear gauge from the storage facility or locker. Place standard block on solid surfaces such as soil, asphalt, or concrete. Do not take standard counts on truck tailgates, tables, or non-solid floors. Keep the gauge bottom clean, rest it on the standard block, and check to be sure it is not resting on the raised edges of the block. Align the nose of the gauge with the keypad against the metal butt plate of the block. Place source rod in safe position notch and tap gently to seat handle. Finally, ensure the handle is reasonably parallel with the gauge. Press the STD button on the front panel. The standard count will display with your previous standard count. Press yes slash on for a new standard count or off slash no to cancel. Press the start slash enter button to start the standard count. Move three to six feet away from the gauge while the standard count is taking place. After 240 seconds, the results of your standard count will be displayed. DS is the density standard count, and MS is the moisture standard count. Log these numbers into your daily standard log record. The moisture count should be within 2% and density should be within 1% of the last four averages from the previous four standard counts. If those averages are greater than three months old, take four new counts to reset the average. Press the yes slash on button and the gauge ready screen will appear. You are now ready to begin testing. It is important to check density standard against the expected standard count range from the calibration report. Chapter three, taking a standard count in the field. Start by removing the gauge drill rod, extraction tool, scraper plate, and standard block from the gauge case. Find a location to take a field standard count and place the standard block on solid surfaces such as soil, asphalt, or concrete. Follow the same steps shown earlier in this video for taking a standard count. It is important that a minimum of one daily standard count is taken at each job site.
Chapter 4, Setting Proctor, Depth, and Time. Press the Time button on the front panel. Scroll up or down to set a desired count time. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, or four minutes. Press yes when you have chosen the time. You will be returned to the gauge ready screen. The Explorer 2 gauge is equipped with an automatic depth indicator. To confirm auto depth is enabled, press menu, scroll down to option eight, select one to enable slash disable auto depth. Confirm selection by pressing yes slash on button. To set the proctor value, press the max slash PR button. Press one for setting soil target proctor PR value. Press the yes slash on button. Once the PR value is entered, the gauge ready screen will display. Chapter five, site preparation. Next, Locate a test site 30 feet or 10 meters away from other gauges and large objects that could influence the gauge results. These items include your truck, large concrete barriers, or walls. If the test site is required to be near or close to walls, then refer to the special functions section, offset and trench correction in the menu. Remove any large debris from testing area using the scraper plate provided Level the test surface by removing raised areas and voids. If there are any small voids that weren't filled, use some surrounding local soil or material to bring them up to grade. Place the extraction tool over one of the guide tubes on the scraper plate. Place the drill rod into the same guide tube as the extraction tool. With a four to eight pound hammer, drive the drill rod into the material to the desired depth by aligning the drill rod notches with the top of the scraper plate tube. The rod depth indicators automatically add two inches of extra depth to the hole, which is necessary for accurate readings. Remove drill rod cautiously to protect hole integrity. Twist and lift gently while pulling straight up on the drill rod will give you the best results. This will prevent holes from collapsing that can affect readings. Employ safe lifting techniques to prevent back injuries. Before moving the scraper plate, a good method for marking the test hole is to outline the edges of the plate and mark the hole location. Chapter six, taking a test. Lower the source rod to the desired depth by pulling the handle trigger back and pushing down on the handle. Always position the gauge source rod against the side of the hole closest to the keypad by pushing the left side of the gauge until it rests firmly against the hole as shown here. This will ensure there are no air gaps between the source rod and the soil being measured. Lock the position by allowing the trigger to engage the notch and then gently pushing the handle down to seat on the notch. Caution, never drive the source rod into the soil by hammering the gauge handle down. To start measurement, press start slash enter. The gauge will then begin taking counts. Move three to six feet from the gauge while keeping aware of your surroundings and avoid heavy machinery. Do not lose sight of the gauge during operation. After the gauge has completed its count time, it will display gauge results automatically. Remove the gauge by pulling up on the handle till the gauge is back in the safe position and return to its case when not in use. For questions or more information regarding the Explorer 2, Contact us at sales at instrotech.com or call us at 919-875-8371.